Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're dealing in greater detail about the gradient of a straight line or a linear function. So last lesson, as a quick recap, we uh, learned about y equals mx plus c, or otherwise we uh, did a bit of revision, I guess, where the m represents the gradient of a linear function and the c represents the y-intercept okay of that particular function now the gradient we also covered the fact that that referred to the steepness of a straight line or a better word would be the rate of change between the two variables x and y so let's say for example if we take a a Cartesian plane as such if we had a graph of let's say y equals x straight up like that we then knew that if we had y equals 10x it would be much steeper such as that we also knew um, if I had a line such as this it would be y equals negative x as it goes the, the opposite way so we, we've done that so we know how well we know how to discriminate between 10 1 and negative 1 but I guess the question arises how do you calculate the actual value of the gradient um, 10 1 and negative 1 if it's not given to you so that's what we're dealing with today so let's look at this first example here. We've got a straight line. I won't tell you the, the equation of it at the moment, but we can see that it goes to the y-intercept. That's quite handy for us to know at this current time. But we want to figure out what the gradient is going to be. So far, this is kind of what we know, right? That's what we know about this function. Um, but we don't know what the, the m is, and that's important because we want to write that equation down as y equals something x plus c. So what we look at, and I guess you might remember this from yesteryears, okay, so year 7, 8, and 9, um, probably year 10 as well, that we learned if it was drawn out for us, what we could in fact do is draw a nice little right angled triangle as such, and then we could use a particular formula, the rise over the run formula. Okay, and that would be how high up does my right angled triangle go? In this case, it goes up two units and how far across does it go well it goes across one unit therefore my gradient for this particular question would be 2 over 1 which equals 2 so this has a gradient of 2 now of course for more challenging questions it might not be drawn out for you and you're most welcome to draw it out each time but it can be time consuming uh, we want to find a quick way the other thing is the rise of a run and you'll see this in the next question, it doesn't tell you if it's a positive or negative gradient, you need to figure that yourself. But let's see if we can come up with a formula, and it is on your formula sheet, by the way. Now, hopefully we rem remember doing the distance uh, lesson, and we had something very similar with our Pythagoras' theorem, and we kind of worked out that if I wanted to find a quick way to find that height there, well, that's simply the difference between the two y coordinates, two, and zero. So what I can say is y2 minus y1 over, and we can do the similar effect with the two x coordinates, one and zero. We can call it x2 minus x1. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your equation of the gradient. Okay, so that's how you find the value of the gradient. Now for us in this question, we could of course go further on to say, well, we know the y-intercept is zero, therefore y equals simply 2x plus zero, or y equals 2x and we're done. Um, but we'll go into the equation of harder questions later on. We want to work out this particular formula, okay? Now, of course, if we want to use this formula and it's drawn out for us, we simply need to take two coordinates that are on the, on the actual graph. In this case, that's the coordinate of 1, 2, okay, and the coordinate of the origin, 0, 0, and that's where I could have said uh, 2 take away 0 over 1 take away 0, which gives me the 2 over 1, which equals 2. I will say, though, although this is the formula we tend to use a lot more, if it's drawn out for me, rise over run is an absolute valid process and one that I would probably use first if it wasn't given the actual coordinates. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. Now, you might notice straight away that this is a negative gradient. That's very handy to remember. Now, of course, if I wanted to do the rise over run, like as such, we could say m equals a rise of 1, a run of 1, the gradient equals 1. Does it? No. 
you get it wrong. You have forgotten to put the negative, and that sometimes where you might be at a disadvantage using the rise over the run formula. So how would I do this using the more advanced formula y2 minus y1? A over x2 minus x1. Well, that's the coordinate of 1, 0. That's the coordinate of 0, 1. And all I now need to do is to put into my formula, um, doesn't matter which way I start, 1 minus 0 over 0 minus 1. That gives me 1 over negative 1. And you can see straight away it comes out. Now, when I said it doesn't matter which way you start, of course I'm referring to the two y values. Y must be on top. If I start with the second one, 0 take away 1 over 1 take away 0, I still get negative 1 on 1. That equals negative 1 still. That's really important. The most common mistake using the formula is people put the x values on top, and that will generate an incorrect response. But of course, you know what? I'd still probably use rise of a run if it was given to me in this format. So what are the questions that you're going to see? Well, this is absolutely one of them. Okay, This is probably the most common question you would get. We're given two coordinates. We're given the coordinates of A and B, and we now need to put it into our formula. So M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It's on your formula sheet if you can't remember it. But 8 minus 4 over 5 minus negative 1. If you want to put that as a plus, absolutely go for it. I did it for demonstration purposes. So it's 4 over, and 5 plus 1 is 6. We're going to simplify that to 2 thirds, and we have a positive gradient of 2 on 3. And of course, they will ask you other questions such as, go and find the midpoint, go and find the distance. But we're just focusing on the gradient today. OK, let's have a look at the next question. What is the difference between this question and the previous one? Well, hopefully what you'll recognize straight away that this is not in the form of y equals mx plus c. Does that matter? Absolutely it does. OK, this is the only form that I can look at the x value and say m is the gradient. It must be in this form. That's why it's called the gradient y-intercept form as we spoke about last lesson. So what I need to do in this particular case is I'm going to um, go up to this little equation here, the 3y plus 2x. So 3y plus 2x equals 9. And I'm going to rearrange this equation. So at the end of it, I have y equals something. So let's have a look. I'm going to take the 2x across as such. 3y equals 9, subtract 2x. In fact, I might even just re uh, rewrite that because I want to have the x first. OK, I'm going to put negative 2x plus 9. I'm now going to divide by the 3 on both numbers there. We get negative 2 thirds x plus 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now this is in the correct format of the gradient y-intercept form. So I can say that the gradient is equal to negative 2 thirds. And that certainly is a lot different from some people who might say it's positive 2. Okay, I hope you can understand that there must be in y equals mx plus c if I'm going to read it directly off the graph. Okay, so what we've seen here is some of these sort of questions. Now, I'm not going to show that one just yet. I apologize, that's going to be for the next lesson. Okay, um, we're just going to recap now that uh, the formula, okay is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's if you are given two coordinates, okay, two points, and then you simply use that formula for both points and find the answer. Otherwise, we use the y equals mx plus c, that's the gradient and y-intercept form, where m is going to be the gradient. All right, so that's a pretty easy process to start with, and it's going to lead into the basis of much of our coordinate geometry, um, particularly for more challenging lines. Um, so questions, this is going to be the first point of call where you are given two coordinates, and you must find the gradient using the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Guys, I hope this made sense. Make sure you watch the next lesson looking at the gradient of parallel and perpendicular lines, as well, of course, the gradient of, uh, sorry, the equation of the straight line. Have a great day.